the last example I would like to look at in this section deals with drug testing. As you probably know, mandatory drug testing has become fairly common, uh, although most of the headlines uh, in this area deal with the drug testing of athletes. Actually, uh, it's become fairly common in other lines of work as well. And the reason is that companies want to be sure that the people that they hire are not using the drugs. Uh, but we have to ask the question, how reliable are these test results? Okay, so let's look at some typical figures and then see what conclusions we can draw by doing the analysis. Okay, so let's assume that a test for a certain drug is 99% accurate. And this means that 99 out of 100 people who use the drug will test positive. That sounds pretty good. Uh, however, there is that one person out of 100 uh, who don't use the drug who will also test positive. Okay, and let's make the further assumption uh, that 2% of the population uses this drug. And the problem is to find the probability that a person who tests positive actually uses the drug. Okay, so we'll start as usual with a let statement. We'll let D be the event that the person uses the drug and let T be the event that the person tests positive. Of course, these are two different things, aren't they? And what we want is the conditional probability that the person uses the drug, the person actually uses the drug, given the fact that the test is positive. Okay, so we know from our uh, earlier analysis that we can find the uh, probability of the intersection of these two events simply by multiplying the conditional probability. In this case, probability of T given D uh, by the probability of D. And the reason that we set it up this way is that uh, the values of these probabilities are given in the problem. Okay, so we have uh, the probability that the test is positive given the person uses drugs. That's, that was given in the problem as 99%. And the probability that the person uses the drug, that's also given as 2%. We multiply those together and we get 0.0198. Okay, next we want to find the probability of a positive test. Okay, so this is going to be the sum of two probabilities, namely the probability that the test is positive given that the person uses the drug times the probability that the person uses the drug. Okay, but then we also have to add in the probability of a positive test if the person does not use the drug. And remember, this is the false positive situation. Okay, then we must multiply by the probability of a false positive. Okay, so these numbers, same as what we used in the previous calculation, for the uh, false positive, we're assuming that that's 1%, and the probability that a randomly chosen person does not use the drug is 98%. If 2% use the drug, then 98% do not. 
And so we find the probability of a positive test to be 0 0.0296 or nearly 3%. Okay, so finally we can calculate the conditional probability that we're looking at. Okay, so probability that the person actually uses the drug given that we have a positive test. And this is just the definition of the conditional probability. Probability of the intersection of these two events divided by the probability of the conditioning event. And we now know each of these two probabilities. That first one was the uh, 0 0.098 0.0198 that we found earlier and then the 0 0.0296 that we just calculated. When you take the ratio of these two you come up with 67 percent and so this is actually a little disturbing. Um, the probability that the person actually uses the drug given that there is a positive test is only 67 percent. That means that one out of three people, nearly one out of three people who test positive are not using the drug. Okay, so the conclusion that we draw is that we need to be very careful uh, whenever there is the possibility of a false positive, even if the chance is very low, from concluding that that person must necessarily be taking the drug.